three flaws of BRRRR. What is BRRRR? Well, it is an acronym which describes a process that has been around in the world of real estate investing for literally hundreds of years. So this isn't new, and I would argue that this is the kind of thing that you would come to your own conclusion on. It was just some simple common sense when you did your first real estate deal, right? If you bought the property, if you wanted to maximize rent, you might do a little fix up or rehab to it, and that would maximize your rent. Once you maximize rent, you had it stabilized, maybe a year or two down the road, you would try to refinance and pull the cash out, maybe from the down payment and the rehab money, so you'd have some money left over so you could go do it again. So this is the kind of strategy, if you will, that has been around for a very long time. So why am I bringing it up? Well, a lot of people ask me this question these days. What do you think of Burr, Phil? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the three flaws to the fact that this is now an acronym. Flaw number one with this Burr acronym is that it promotes a strategy focus. A focus on just simply applying the strategy because they want to go do their first Burr deal. The problem with that is it excludes the most important focus you should always have in real estate and that is the results. What do you want real estate to accomplish for you? What does that deal, what's it supposed to do financially for you? I have seen this happen. In fact, a, a relatively new apprentice in my program, before he joined, he did one of these deals. And I looked at it and I said, man, this deal sucks. He said, whoa, 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 Phil, I did every step correctly. I said, I know you did. You applied the Burr strategy perfectly. The problem is the deal sucks. You didn't focus on the result. You focused on the strategy. It's very common. A lot of people do this. I would argue that when it comes to results, it's actually pretty simple. There's only two things, that, uh, two directions people go in. Either they want cash now, they want more money right now, or they already have a certain amount of money that they want to get a return on investment on their existing capital, or what I would call build wealth. Those are really the only two, and some people want to do both, of course. But the idea is if the result is either one or the other, that starts to help frame which strategy you're going to take. By the way, in my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, um, I give away for free in these videos, I, uh, I talk more in length about this concept of cash now versus building wealth. Now, in addition to having a results focus, the next layer is you want to have a deal focus. You want to focus on what is the best strategy for that deal. Right, so as opposed to thinking in terms of, okay, no, 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 oh, there's a BRR deal. Um, no, you wanna be focused on what is the best strategy for that specific deal. And, and what ends up happening is that may mean that you don't have to apply this, right? I mean, you could buy a vacation rental right now in some parts of America that are already rehabbed, already have the furniture in them, already rented. The only problem is that the management's charging 35% of gross. And all you've got to do is, is remove that management, put in your 10% of gross management. You might be able to increase um, the income by by optimizing the Airbnb, VRBO, uh, Homeway, and TripAdvisor listings. But even if you can't, you're right there, you're already earning an extra 25% of gross. So the point is, having a deal focus removes you from trying to want to check off all these boxes and just do it. And it puts you in a position where you're, you're first of all, on the, on the bigger scale, doing what you're supposed to be doing as, as, your, as far as your financial goals, but then on a deal-to-deal -deal basis, you're applying the right strategy to produce the most results. All right, so flaw number one is that it promotes a strategy focus rather than a results and deal focus. Flaw number two is that it puts the focus on a traditional version of real estate investing. Now, it's not inherently wrong that there are certain techniques that are traditional, but what that does is that excludes you from all the creative techniques. It puts you in a box, a box that if it doesn't fit in this box, then you exclude it. And there's so much opportunity beyond that. There's so many deals that you might be leaving behind that if you applied the right technique, it could have made an incredible amount of money. Some deals that we do, we acquire them with creative financing that we don't need to rehab. Maybe we move a tenant buyer in there who's gonna do the fix up for us or an owner financing buyer. Uh, we don't, if we do the rental, it's done in such a way where it's gonna, it's gonna maximize the results. We don't have to refinance because we took it over subject to. And so, it, and of course, we'd like to repeat those as many as we can. So having a traditional focus, what that also does is that just puts you into a little box, right? And if you wanna learn more about all the different techniques you can apply, I would encourage you to check out my course that's absolutely free where I have combined so many of my most um, popular videos 
and some additional trainings as well. And it's a curriculum, it's over 10 hours long on creative real estate investing. As a creative real estate investor, we still do traditional deals, that does happen. But we also have an entire toolbox of creative techniques. For example, I mean, some people ask me, what's an example of a traditional deal, a bird deal that, that your people might do? Well, it'd be in an area where, let's say, for example, you can buy the property for 20000 You can uh, buy for twenty. You can put 15000 into it, so you're in the deal at 35000 You then can rent it out for 900 or 1000 a month. And then, of course, you want to just pull that thirty-five out of there and do a long-term 30-year uh, fixed rate loan. You refinance and go do as many of those deals as you want to do. So that can be a great technique in certain specific areas on certain specific houses. But otherwise, there's so many other techniques that, that are excluded when you have this focus of doing your first bird deal, your second bird deal, because it's traditional in nature and you're leaving behind so many other opportunities. Flaw number three is that it promotes the wrong order. Now, the problem is not the order of this process. It's the fact that now that it's an acronym, people want to start with the B. They want to start with the buy, which is the worst place to start. You want to begin with the end in mind, not only in the result that you're trying to accomplish, but in the fact that if you begin with the end in mind with this process, what ends up happening is you ensure you make good decisions. Sure, make sure that you do a deal that is so good you want to repeat it, obviously. But moreover, making sure that you know what the terms and the requirements and the underwriting guidelines are for the refinance loan. Who's the lender? What are they going to expect? And making sure that all the steps that you do ahead of time lead to making sure that you can actually get this. Because oftentimes what people will do is they'll buy the hard money loan, they'll rehab, they'll rent it out. Uh-oh! They missed a few details. It's going to take an extra 12 months to get a refinance. All of a sudden it kills all their profit. You have to begin with the end in mind. You have to work your way backwards. Next, let's talk about rent. Who are you renting to? Who's your tenant? Right? Do you want to be in the traditional renting business? Do you want to be in a situation where the rent doesn't come in on November 1st and December 1st and it's a single mom with kids and you have to evict them around Christmas time? Do you want to be in that business, right? Do you want to be in the business of vacation rentals where you obviously do get the benefit of more income and they come in and out so you don't have to worry about evictions, but then what about partiers and the spring breakers? What about them trashing the place? You need to know what you're getting yourself into. In fact, I would argue that when it comes to single family homes, the majority of those should be flipped. They should be short term cash now techniques. Very few techniques really make the single family home viable as a long term wealth building strategy. I do have a video on some of those techniques, three ways to turn a house into a cash flowing machine. So it can be done, but oftentimes it's not as good as you think. Another idea is this. Have you ever rehabbed a house? I mean, really rehabbed, hired the contractors, made sure that everything worked out right? This. This can be a minefield. There's a lot of problems, a lot of problems that investors run into. I have a video on seven things to never say to a contractor, which gets you starting down the road. But if you've never been in this road, that can be dangerous. There's a whole lot of pitfalls. Then there's also just the concept of, I mean, if you want to repeat this, there's a lot of people out there that have bought 20, 30, 50, 60 single family homes that they've accumulated over a long period of time. They get done. And they go, gosh, this is awful. And they sell the whole entire portfolio because it's such a mess, right? And in fact, I have a video on that subject, flipping versus renting houses, where I go in depth into how that's possible, that owning 60 family homes and you're angry about it, right? And you of being appreciative. All right, so I hope this gives you more clarity that the other problem with the fact that this is now an acronym is not that it's in the wrong order, it's that it, it, it puts the focus at the B when it should get the focus going backwards. All right, well, I'm Phil Pustiowski with Freedom Mentor. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it added great value. If you want to learn how you can be a market-leading, first-class real estate investor, consider my apprentice program where my team and I, we mentor, we coach, we guide, we turn people into money-making machines. And also, if you haven't already seen it, again, I want to suggest you check out that video, Three Ways to Turn a House into a Cash-Flowing Machine, because I go in much greater depth and how you can apply some of the things we've talked about here to really make a lot of money with a single family home. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, comments, put them down below here, and I'll see you on the next video.